All right, I want to welcome everyone back to Bolts on Tap and apologize for our technical difficulties. Obviously, our original show went down in flames. A little bit. Uh, so we're going to do a little abbreviated version. we got Rob Game just holding up the cell phone with the audio plugged in. Hopefully you can hear us uh, so we can talk a little bit about the Chargers win over the Texans. And uh, if you're missing it now, maybe uh, you can catch it later as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll post this all up there on our 10 News Facebook page. But, John, uh, Chargers come back 21-13, win over the Texans, out of the bye week. Liked what they did on the bye week. The rest we talked about a little bit at the beginning. Uh, the red zone was one issue that they wanted to work on, and ironically, the Chargers only ran one play in the red zone the entire game. Was that the Hunter it, Henry? It was the Hunter Henry touchdown. Was that a 19 yard touchdown? It was a 12 yard touchdown. Oh, okay. It was after the uh, long catch by Dontrell Inman with the penalty that got I was them say, just just barely in the red one zone. One play, one touchdown. So I don't know if we can draw some conclusions on that. And then the other thing the Chargers were working on was third quarter defense. Uh, they had given up touchdowns in three straight games coming out in the third quarter. They did not do that today. In fact, the Chargers, I don't believe, gave up any points in the third quarter. They, they did not. Only points they gave up, that late field goal, uh, followed by the onside kick, of course, that made us a little nervous. So I thought the Chargers used their bye week very well to prepare for the Texans. Unfortunately, they don't have any more bye weeks left. No, 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 no. They're, they're going to have to find a way to uh, find some extra days in there to prepare for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, they will not have the added benefit of a terrible quarterback because Jameis Winston is a significant upgrade over Brock Osweiler, who pretty much just gave the game away. Uh, I, I was drawing parallels to, to this earlier this morning in my podcast that I thought Brock Osweiler and the Houston Texans reminded me a lot of Trevor Simeon when he came back from injury and still didn't seem right, and the Denver Broncos where the Chargers just waited for Simeon to make mistakes. They just waited for Brock Osweiler to make mistakes. They walked out with a W, but I don't know that we can really get anything from it except to say playoff hopes are still alive and but how realistic is it the chargers likely need to win six in a row or go five and one and get incredibly lucky it's not easy to do even if you're a dominant team in the nfl how about the new england patriots they're nine and two tied for the best record in the afc they haven't won six in a row they have not won six in a row absolutely not hard to do yeah there are three teams in the league so far this year that have won six games in a row uh, the Miami Dolphins currently have a six-game winning streak. The New York Giants have a six-game winning streak. And the Dallas Cowboys have a ten-game winning streak. All those are active. Uh, the Oakland Raiders have won five in a row. They'll have a chance to get to six against the Buffalo Bills this upcoming weekend. But winning six in a row for a good team, for a borderline great team, is almost impossible to do. Like you said, even the New England Patriots with Tom Brady have not been able to do it. So the idea that the Chargers are going to do it and glide their way into the playoffs that way um, it, it's it's a remote possibility. They do have the right attitude for it. Dontrell Inman after the game, and he had a terrific performance. Six catches, 119 yards, basically said in a locker room. Have you ever been in a situation where your back was in the wall and like you had to do something or it was like over? I mean, he was really the must-win, do-or-die situation mentality, and I think that is permeating. And that can help a team for a while. Yeah. But eventually, usually, you run out of gas somewhere late in the season that's what I'm worried about with the Chargers, and they get a, a tough two-game stretch against NFC opponents here before they come back you know, and face the AFC West, the Raiders, and the Chiefs still on the schedule at the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, just when you look at the, the teams and the quarterbacks that they still have to face this year, Jameis Winston's one of the five to ten best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, Alex Smith, regardless of whether or not he'll throw a pass down the field, is one of the ten best quarterbacks in the league. Cam Newton. Uh, Cam Newton and Derek Carr are proven to be one of the five to ten best quarter, two of the five to ten best quarterbacks in the league. Um, and ahead of Broccoli will be quarterbacking the Cleveland Browns on Christmas <laughs> Eve, that or something. Yeah, someone, someone uh, that that's <laughs> oh, just as talented. Matt Barkley, maybe. Yeah, someone who's just as talented <laughs> as as ahead of Broccoli. Um, the the point is, the Chargers are not going to survive with Craig Mager as a starting quarterback, cornerback. They're not going to survive the way they did against the Houston Texans yesterday against those better teams. They're going to have to play a better style of football. A couple more things uh, before we go. Joey Bosa, defensive rookie of the year. It was discussed during the game on the broadcast yesterday that he could be a candidate. You wouldn't have thought, missing the first month of the season, holding out through training camp, that that would have even been a possibility. But has he been that far head and shoulders above everyone else on the field when he's played that he's a legitimate contender for that award now. Yes. And, you know, it's going to be very amusing, and I don't think the NFL would actually let it happen, but he's got to be one of the two or three favorites for Defensive Rookie of the Year because of how great he's played. 
and now it's just a matter of keeping it up for the remainder of the season. But Tom Brady missed the first four games of the season as well, and he's probably your front runner in the MVP race, or, or at least one of the options in the MVP That's race. That's what the NFL wouldn't let happen, is what you're saying. I Tom mean, Brady MVP this either year? Either Brady or both, <laughs> because obviously they don't want players to get into the habit of taking the first month of the season off to give them a better chance to be you know, productive and healthy and energ- energized for the second half of the season. Would be the first Chargers Rookie of the Year since Sean Merriman yep. in 2005. Finally, our overriding question that I tweet about and we started talking about on our first Go around on bolts on tab. Do the positives for Mike McCoy outweigh the negatives? We talked about some of the positives. We think he gets the team ready to play. He's got a good game plan. In between, in he between prepares games. them well. Yeah, Chargers seem to come out well. They take a lot of leads at halftime. Yep. I, I don't think they come out and you never say, what the heck are they doing? Why are they doing this? Uh, they seem to understand their opponents. They understand getting their team ready. And they understand getting the most out of players. You yeah. know, get them to play all the way through. Monday through Saturday. The Great drawbacks, coach. of course, all seem to be strategic and having to do with risk management, averse, risk averse behavior in the second half by Mike McCoy that has repeatedly cost the Chargers games. And ultimately, I still can't say that the positives outweigh the negatives, but I did want to acknowledge, because some people won't do it, and I've been a Mike McCoy critic for 12 months or more now thinking that he probably is not the guy for this job. It needs to be acknowledged that he is doing some things right. And somewhere in there, and maybe this is what frustrates me the most, somewhere in there, there might be a pretty decent NFL head coach if he would just ever allow himself to evolve and be a little more aggressive in his decision-making. I don't know that I agree with that. No? And I'm, I'm going to use a phrase that Kevin AC uses a lot, and other people have started using now that AC's made it uh, famous or, or regular, which is, Obviously, Mike McCoy is smart. He's smart. He's got a big brain. Uh, Used that to lead to success with the Denver Broncos as their offensive coordinator, and he's done so with the Chargers as well. What I don't think he is is a leader of men. I don't think he has the personality to be a leader. I don't think he's charismatic enough to give the important halftime speech, get everyone fired up. Maybe not, but he's got Phillip Rivers, and Phillip Rivers, at least for now, seems to be enough to get the Chargers motivated out there and playing their hardest. I think a halftime speech is great if your team's down in the dumps and doesn't have any energy. I don't see that as the problem for the Chargers, though. They're not coming out lifeless. I just think strategically, the decisions, fourth and one. We saw it again yesterday. They tried to draw an offsides penalty on a fourth and one. It's become laughable because opposing teams know the Chargers will not go for it on fourth and one. It is always a ruse to try to draw the opposing team offsides. The predictability ultimately costs Mike McCoy, I think, in the end because it's being exploited by other teams. You you might be right. I, for me, I still think, and yes, I, I think on Sunday the decisions he makes are are awful but I think where he could grow the most as a coach maybe his biggest deficiency as a coach is personality wise he's just not likable and you know it's a coach player relationship is exactly that it's a relationship the player has to like the coach the coach has to like the player to some degree so that they're willing to work with each other and for each other got some of the numbers uh chargers now in one score games four and six uh, this year, that's, that's almost great. every game not w- is a one-score game. Three and nine last year, so that's it's been even worse. It's been pretty bad. But the really close games is where it gets Mike McCoy. Since the start of last season, the Chargers two and six in games decided by a field goal or less, or went to overtime, thus tied at the end of regulation. That's three out of four times the Chargers lose in a game that is coming down to a hair's breadth at the end. Yeah, I mean, that, that the conservative coaching will get you there. And, and also, you know, whether or not you're a leader that the players are willing to put stick their neck out for matters in situations like that. All right, Bucks next week on Sunday. Chargers, four-point favorites. They I'm were surprised favorites over that. the Texans. They're now favorites at home over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks are one of the hottest teams in the league. A win at Kansas City two weeks ago, and then they follow that up with a 14-5 win over the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, in Tampa yesterday, so they're going to bring some momentum to San Diego. They got the cross-country thing, and I thought that would undo the Miami Dolphins a couple it weeks ago. Not. It did not. It did not. So will it undo the Tampa Bay Bucks? Uh, that's a good team coming in here. Maybe one of the big surprises in the NFL this season. Yeah, it's it's interesting because, I, I uh, you know, 
the good quarterbacks have played well against the Chargers, but they usually haven't been the determining factors. Uh, the Saints didn't win because of Drew Brees. They won because the Chargers made mistakes. Derek Carr didn't win because, you know, he was great. Um, he, the, the Raiders won because of the mistakes the Chargers have made. So Jameis Winston is the best player on the Buccaneers. No one can doubt that. He's a very, very good player. He's got good receivers, too. He's Mike got, Evans, even with Vincent Jackson out, he's got good receivers. Yeah, and, uh, but I, I would be surprised if Jameis Winston is the reason that the Buccaneers win the game. If the Chargers can avoid making mistakes, which they did against the Houston Texans, they avoided making mistakes, they will have a very good chance to win this game. All right, hopefully next week we'll be able to go the full 30 minutes on time. I'm sure we will. Monday at lunchtime. In between, those stop on by Social Tap, either down here uh, at the ballpark or their new location on Art Street, uh, by El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego State. Great food, great place to watch the games. We watched the Charger game yesterday, had a phenomenal time. Oh, yeah. Brunch, lunch, dinner, whatever. It is fantastic. For John Gennaro, I'm Ben Higgins. Thanks for joining us on an abbreviated technical difficulty issue of Bolts on Tap from 10 News. Thanks for sticking with us.